Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and I think that's something that most people that aren't Flat Earthers have realised, is that Flat Earthers are kind of gullible. And that is particularly ironic given that Flat Earthers like to think of themselves as being free thinkers. Now of course I don't think that it's just Flat Earthers that are gullible when it comes to conspiracy theories. I think that a lot of conspiracy theorists are quite gullible and don't actually do their own research as much as they claim to. So whilst I'll mostly focus on Flat Earthers for this video, keep in mind that some of the points that I raise can be applied to other conspiracy theorists as well. Now one of the things I do have to start with is I have to explain what do I mean by gullible. Because if we just go off the dictionary definition of gullible, easily persuaded by something, well, you'll find that flat earthers aren't as gullible as you might think because it's very difficult to persuade flat earthers that the earth is a globe. However, I do think that they are easily persuaded, not by any old argument but by arguments that closely align with their beliefs. So you might not be able to convince a flat earther that the earth is a globe, but it wouldn't be too difficult to convince them that all recorded history before the 1800s is false. All you have to do is make up a story about high-tech civilizations living everywhere, and then the mud flood happened, and the only civilizations that survived were our civilization, but it lost all the technology, and the civilizations that are beyond the ice wall. Now I could make up a whole story about that and I might even do that someday because it is something that it does sound like a flat earther would believe. There are flat earthers that have believed other things very similar to that that were just completely made up. I remember something called there are no forests on flat earth wake up and that was just a completely made up idea designed to see if flat earthers would believe it and they did. And there are still Flat Earthers even today that believe the ideas that were put forward in it. So even though Flat Earthers will try to claim that they don't just believe anything and that they only believe things that they have good reason to believe, we can see that that's not really true. And I think that nothing exemplifies this more than the belief in Flat Earth itself. So one thing that Flat Earthers ask any time you bring up something that shows that the Earth is a sphere is well, have you done that yourself? This is all born out of the idea that if someone shows you evidence that the Earth is a sphere, like photos from outer space for example, and they just show it to you, well, those photos could be fake. Now, the only real way to know for certain that those photos are not fake is to take those photos yourself, which can be applied to any photo. And by extension, this can be applied to any video as well. I mean, how do you know that the video that you are watching isn't CGI or the audio is fake or something like that. Now this is pretty convenient for flat earthers because it allows them to dismiss any evidence against their position that they may be presented with. Now leaving aside the practicality of actually testing every single claim that you are presented with, I don't think flat earthers actually practice this as much as they might say. Because a claim that is absolutely central to flat earth, in fact, half the flat earth movement wouldn't exist without it, is this idea of we see too far. How many times has the black swan been brought up as evidence against the globe because apparently we can see too far in that image? Heaps of times. However, if flat earthers truly believe that you should test everything for yourself, then every flat earth that you argue with should present their own pictures of them seeing too far, not just the black swan. Because I can easily say, well, I don't think that the black swan is evidence of flat earth because it can easily be faked. So going by this logic, unless you have tested it for yourself, you can't actually say with any amount of certainty what the shape of the earth is. You can't say that it is round, or flat. And if someone has gone ahead and tested the shape of the earth for themselves, and they have found it to be round, well then you can't really argue against that because they tested it for themselves. You can try and argue that their results are fake, but I can just as easily argue that all the flat earthers results are fake. This is a scenario in which no one gets anywhere. But hey, not every flat earther is a flat earther that says that you have to go out and test it for yourself. Some are, but not everyone is. The problem is, is that I've never seen a flat earther challenge another flat earther's claim, unless that claim is a claim that can be used against flat earthers, like 
15 degrees per hour. Now of course a flat earther might say well that's because flat earthers have it right. Flat earthers don't challenge each other because flat earthers are right about it. However I have found instances where flat earthers are just wrong. They will present evidence that they will say is evidence of a flat earth. However upon closer inspection it's actually evidence that the earth is a globe. An example of it is this here. I can show you San Jacinto right here. Now, Globers would say, oh, look, you can't see it in this picture. But the problem is once you flip on the infrared, you can see much farther. So given that infrared is less susceptible to refraction than visible light, that was something that I thought was Flat Earth's strongest point. Until I dug a little bit deeper. You see, I went over this point quite a few times, and most of the times that I went over it, I thought, well, that checks out, that checks out. But then I found one issue with it. You see, this was the information that was given in an attempt to show that this was evidence for flat earth. I went ahead and I verified every single bit of it from the mountain height to the observational height to the horizon distance to the shore distance to the curvature obstructing to the land obstructions and to the total mountain obstruction. And there was one thing that stood out as being wrong and that was the land obstructions. It did not account for the observer height. And when you make that tiny adjustment you actually find that it fits perfectly with what you would expect to see on a globe. Why did Flat Earthers share this image around without question? It wasn't Nathan Thompson that took this image and did all that maths. It was Jay Tolan. Nathan Thompson was just repeating what Jay Tolan said. And when it comes to Flat Earth, that was the hardest thing to debunk, which means that everything else Flat Earth related has been easier to debunk. So this raises the question, if Flat Earth arguments are generally easy to debunk, then why don't flat earthers call other flat earthers out more? And why do they even believe these arguments? So obviously there is confirmation bias. If you believe something, then you're just going to accept evidence that agrees with your position without asking questions. I think that a lot of people are susceptible to this without even realizing it, myself included. I know that I have been susceptible to confirmation bias before. But I think that only explains part of it, not the entire picture because you know, flat earthers don't really start out as flat earthers. You see, flat earthers generally start out believing that the earth is a globe like everyone else. The difference between flat earthers and everyone else is that flat earthers will typically believe in other conspiracy theories beforehand, which does lead to that whole confirmation bias thing. But more importantly, the claims that are made by flat earth aren't typically claims that you're supposed to think about too much. You see, there are claims that flat earthers wholeheartedly agree with, that when you don't really think about them, it might make sense. Like the claim that crepuscular rays show that the sun is small and local. The claim goes is that crepuscular rays appear to show the sun's rays diverging, which would only be possible on a flat earth, and if the sun was just above the clouds. Now if you give this just a little bit of thought, this makes zero sense. It means that the sun would have to be closer to earth than 20 kilometers away. Even on a flat earth that is just preposterous, especially given when we see the occurrence of crepuscular rays. Are you seriously trying to tell me that when the sun has probably gone past Australia and I can see crepuscular rays that it means that it's just above the clouds that I'm seeing? It makes sense right up until you try and think about it. And the same goes for other flat earth arguments as well. The whole we don't feel the earth spinning so it must be flat and stationary, that works until you try to analyze what we should be feeling if the earth is spinning. It is something that tries to appeal to your initial intuitive reaction. If your initial intuitive reaction is, hold on, let me think about this, you're probably not going to end up being a flat earther. Now it'd be remiss of me to not mention that there are some more, let's say, advanced flat earth arguments out there. And I don't think the more advanced flat earth arguments are there really to convince anyone that the earth is flat. I think they're more to convince flat earthers that they are right. When you've got someone that brings up an experiment and the flat earther asks, okay, what is your independent variable? What is the cause? that more seems like a way to try and win a debate. This is because independent variable meaning cause is really just a semantics debate. And as we all know, when as I hope we all know this, when it comes to semantics debates, it allows both sides to appear like they have won. Because ultimately the main points that are raised go unaddressed and it's a case of 
my definition is right and yours is wrong. And really definitions can't be wrong because language is not prescriptive, it is descriptive. Obviously there is a bit more nuance to it, but I hope that everyone understands the point that I'm trying to make. But another thing that I think helps explain why flat earthers are so gullible is the whole absurdity of it really. You see, flat earth is really absurd when you get down to it. You need to have heaps of people around the world all in on a conspiracy, which someone would have come forth by now. It also means the way in which things operate just make no sense. They, they have to make brand new branches of physics like fluorspective. And when you believe things that are absurd, it becomes really easy to believe in other things that are absurd. I mean, if everyone is lying about the shape of the earth, why wouldn't they also be lying about the entirety of history as well? Now I think I've done a good job of explaining why flat earthers are gullible, but I just want to explain lastly that flat earthers are gullible. Some of them more than others though. You see, in early 2019, I did a live stream in which I put a document on a screen. Now the document said that it came from the director of Earth Shape Counterintelligence and said that I get paid for making videos against flat earth. So this is the document that I put up on screen. I still have the email by the way. As you can see, yeah, it basically says that I get paid for making videos. You know, I get $580 per YouTube video. I do not get that much money per YouTube video, unfortunately. In fact, given my subscriber count, that would make me tier three, which means that I should be getting 1,400. Yeah, I'd love to be getting that amount of money, to be honest. <laughs> Now obviously this is ridiculous, which is kind of the point. Even though we took some steps to make it somewhat believable, the overall vibe that you'd get from reading something like this is, it's obviously a joke. Especially seeing as it's from the director of Earth Shape Counterintelligence. You'd think that if someone puts that on the screen that they might be taking the mickey, right? Now we can go down to the second page where it says, just kidding, this is all a hoax to trap the gullible. And people fell for this. This is, was really a test to see how gullible flat earthers were. Now going into it, we kind of figured that flat earthers were going to fall for it, and there was always the possibility that it would just amount to nothing as well. But you can't really claim that flat earthers are gullible unless you have evidence for that, which this provided. Now obviously not all flat earthers believe this, but enough of them did that it proved the point that we're trying to make. Now hopefully I've explained well enough why I think that flat earthers are gullible, and I think that there are probably some reasons that I have missed. Now I don't think that flat earthers are a lost cause, I think that it is possible for them to become less gullible. However, I think to do that, they probably need to drop the whole flat earth belief. Because I really think that the flat earth belief is something that is keeping them gullible, and stopping them from realising that, you know, maybe this is something that they've been conned into believing. And if you're a flat earther that has made it this far, obviously you're going to disagree with the thesis of this video, but I have a challenge for you. Take one of your favourite claims, like the earth is spinning for example, and that we should feel it. Now, obviously the globe position is that we shouldn't feel it, but I wonder if you can explain why we think that. That's my challenge for you. But anyway, that is it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to do for future videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Shaggy, Wolfie, Mori, Grey Morgos, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, Militant Agnostic, Kitten McKitten from Kittentown, Craig D'Amelio, and Nerthan Terpson. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, I'm definitely not paid by the director of Earth Shape Counterintelligence. Trust